I'm showing you, this is the only photograph I shall show you which isn't uh, taken by David Dawson this evening. Uh, all the other photographs are um, from, uh, uh, selections from the uh, really beautiful um, photographs he took of Lucian in his studio. This was snapped by me on, with my iPhone in uh, the summer of 2010, so quite recently. I, I'm showing, well, I, I thought it just looked so pretty sitting there. This is Lucian's palette by his window. Two reasons for showing it to you. One is, um, one of the first things that Lucian told me when I first met him was that he, this was you know, nearly 20 years ago, was that he'd already decided on his last picture. His last picture was to show his palette lying in the corner of the studio, discarded. Uh, very good idea for a picture. Unfortunately, those sort of things are rather hard to plan in advance. And in fact, his last picture is the one which, um, the portrait of the hound, which I'm finished, which is in the last room of the exhibition. So I, since he died last July, I, I thought of this as a sort of little <coughs> substitute for his last picture, sort of tribute. And um, uh, the other reason is that um, I want to tell you uh, a, a little story about colour, what you might call a chromatic anecdote, uh, which is this. Uh, it involves this, uh, this garment, um, the blue scarf. I want to take you back to, um, I suppose, one evening towards the end of April 2004, uh, by which time I'd been sitting for this portrait for uh, five or six months, uh, religiously, on every occasion wearing uh, a tweed jacket, a pink shirt, and this uh, blue scarf. And for all that time, Lucien had put not a single touch of blue or blue scarf on the canvas. However, it had been agreed at the, at the or we, uh, he'd announced at the previous sitting that this evening was going to be the one at which he was he was going to start on the blue scarf. He's, I'll explain about his a little bit about his process later on. But his paintings tend to spread out, so you know, he'd reached my chin, then my uh, the collar of my shirt, and we very very slowly, almost glacially slowly, we'd reach the scarf. Um, it was exciting. Well, it was exciting partly because any sort of progress was exciting to uh, to a sort of producing focus. Uh, um, you know, quite often one looked at the painting at the end of uh, an intensive evening of painting and um, there didn't seem to be any visible change at all. So um, uh, a big event such as you know, him starting on a new garment or, or you know, starting on a different area of my face, that was you know, something to look forward to. The other reason was that the blue is a quite an unusual colour in Lucian's palette. Um, all painters have their particular favourite range of favoured range of colours. Um, David Holton, as we can see from the exhibition of the Royal Academy, uh, favours a fairly bright palette. Lucian liked what he called the colours of life, which were you know oatmeal, browns, greys, khakis, that sort of thing. One of the reasons why he um, he gave for not wanting to take drugs was that he'd heard that if you took drugs, you might see beautiful colours. He would say, I don't want to see beautiful colours. Uh, similarly, he'd heard that you saw wonderful sights. And he said, I don't want to see wonderful sights. I want to see the same thing every day. Ordinary life was perfectly good, for, good enough for him. So anyway, this was a moment. And Lucian, um, I sat in the chair. Lucian uh, mixed, mixed, mixed the blue and approached the canvas and it wasn't quite right so it was scraped off and um, he mixed it again. That wasn't quite right either. This happened two, three, four times and finally he said, I just can't get this blue right. I must have gone mad. It's, it's obviously me. I'll do something else. So he spent the rest of the evening doing a bit of sort of brown air above uh, my head in the corner of the picture. And I went home. I, don't, I live in Cambridge. I, I, I went home on the train and uh, explained what had happened to my wife when I got home. And she said, hmm, which blue scarf were you wearing? And I said, what? She said, you know you've got two royal blue scarves, don't you? 
And I said, no, I had absolutely no idea of that fact. It was a complete surprise to me. But it turned out that I did indeed have to. I had one which is about half a shade darker than this. There's a little bit of black in it. You actually have to put them side by side to tell which one is which. However, it seemed that for five or six months I'd on every occasion worn this one, and on the vital evening I'd managed to get the wrong one out and put it on. And this is really the point of my story. It has completely thrown Lucy in. And the reason is, I deduce, that all the other patches of pink and white and opal and cockney and grey, which she built up as a sort of mosaic of my face over, over all those evenings, every single one of those had been keyed to precisely this shade of blue. So the fact that the scarf, when he, when he came to take another look at it, was not that shade of blue made the whole thing impossible. Um, I told this anecdote in, in Austria a couple of weeks ago, and somebody said, uh, made a point which did not occur to me, which is, if my wife hadn't explained the problem, and <laughs> possibly this picture would never have been finished, in which case it would, uh, so no, maybe. Anyway, so I, I went back for the next sitting uh, with the correct scarf on. I felt it probably wasn't necessary to explain what had happened to the artist, so we just, uh, we just carried on in slowly but steadily towards the conclusion.